Is it worth spending over £100 on a capture card where really you could possibly get away with spending £10 in capture card? Because I've got four capture cards here in front of me, ranging from the very, very dear, the Flint uh, 4K Plus uh, by Cloner Alliance. Uh, I've done a, just done a review on that, actually. Roughly about £180 to the very, very cheap here. Uh, this little gizmo capture card here is about £10. And in fact, you could possibly get it for about £5. I actually paid £25 for it on Amazon. And then you've got these two in the middle. Uh, I paid about £40 to £50 on eBay. Is it worth spending the £150? Well, that's what you are going to decide because it's going to be a blind face off. And uh, that's really about it, really. So I'll do a talking head to shot what I'm doing right now. Talking head to shot? talking headshot <laughs> that I'm doing right now. And I'll also do a bit of gaming as well, a bit of Fortnite, just to show you the difference between the colors, basically, of all the capture cards. Okay, so let's crack on with the video then, I suppose. Go on with it. Are we recording? Yeah, we are recording, aren't we? Yeah, we are recording. Right. And welcome to uh, Capture Footage E. And uh, just to do a comparison, uh, you can look at the colours of my red tartan shirt. I'm now going to do a close-up of this Roadhouse DVD to the camera. And see if you can see the colours. And I'm also going to do a Gladiator one, which is predominantly white, which is a bit different. Right, so hopefully you'll get something from that. Let's go on to Capture Card B. And now you're looking at Capture Card B footage. So I'm just going to show you this Roadhouse DVD. Might you have a look at my shirt and maybe the background colours. Um, how do they compare? And here is now the Gladiator Blu-ray. And there you go. I might even switch over to the Logitech uh, cam. There we go. So that's now the Logitech cam. And back to the Canon EOS 250. Okay, capture card C now. And just uh, for your information, all these are going to be captured at 1080p at 30 frames per second. That's what it's set up to. So as you see, look at my shirt now. And the colours in the background, Roadhouse DVD. And the Gladiator DVD. And now just for fun, uh, I'm going to switch to the Logitech Cam. That's me now talking on the Logitech cam. I know I never did this for Capture Card E. You just have to forgive me for that. Uh, try and make up for it. And uh, here we go. Right, so let's go back to the original uh, Canon 250D uh, stream from uh, plugged into my HDMI. And last but not least, this is Capture Card D. Look at my shirt, the colours in the background. I'm going to show you this Roadhouse DVD. And now I'm going to give you this Gladiator DVD. And now I'm going to switch over to the stream cam. There we go, you're now talking to me directly into the stream cam. How do I look? And now I'm going to switch back to the Canon 250D, plugged straight into this capture card D. This video is sponsored by Anchor. Apple created a problem by not adopting the USB-C as their only charging cable that they already use on both their MacBook Pros and MacBook Airs and iPads, but rather frustratingly, not their new iPhones, which still use lightning cables. But not only that, but they haven't even included the fast charging plug that they introduced last year with their iPhone 11. 
Well, Anchor have solved this problem with this fast charging plug set that not only fast charges your iPhone, but it will also charge your iPad or MacBook Pro or Air at the same time. And it can also fast charge your AirPods and Apple Watch too. And it will also fast charge your Android device. Right, so there you go. Did you find that anyway helpful at all? Have you got a favourite? Uh, do you think that uh, one is £140 better than the other or more? Because I'm, I'm about to reveal the answers if I can spit that out. I'm going to do it right now. So this is your last chance. Okay. Capture card A was this here, the USB 3.0 FHD capture card, generic capture card. Um, picked that up in EBA, uh, 40 to 50 pounds probably. Uh, and it comes all the way from China. Capture card B was the most expensive, the Flint 4KP Plus, 189 pounds. It does a lot more than just capture though. Um, obviously we've got the two different feeds as well, but if, is that your favorite? And, and is it worth an extra 140 pounds plus? It's up to you. Capture card C was the Ruina, and it's broken. This, to be fair, was stepped on by my kids, and that's why I replaced it with this one here. Again, got it on eBay, probably around about the same price, 40 or 50 pounds. Um, it was hanging on by a thread, but now I believe it is gone, so may as well just get rid of it now, So uh, because I couldn't even do the PS4 test. But you get the idea from the stills test anyway, what it'd be like if you see one of those on eBay. And capture card D was this HDMI capture card thingy, which you could actually get for about £5 if you are uh, if you search around on eBay. Amazon probably about £25. Whether they're all the same, uh, I don't know, but they all look seem to look the same. Uh, so there you go. Is the footage that you got from Capture Card D worth or is it any better or worse than uh, the Flint? Uh, is it an extra £170? pounds worth better. I don't know, I haven't looked at it myself, so it's an interesting uh, experiment. And if you found this anyway fun or helpful, please leave a like. I really would appreciate it. If you didn't, then that's okay. I'm just very, very thankful that you've uh, watched this video at all, if you've even made it this far. Uh, thank you, thank you very, very much. And um, yeah, just stay safe, everyone. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.